Um, we are here to celebrate the um, home entertainment release of the critically acclaimed film, The Mitchells versus the Machines. Um, the Katie Mitchell Special Edition, which is what we're going to be talking about today, has over two hours of new content, and it also has even 40 minutes of deleted scenes. We're going to have the production designer and character designer, Lindsay Oliveras, with us. Lindsay is going to teach you guys how to draw the adorable Monchi. Um, so without further ado, get your scratch paper, get your pens, get your paper, get whatever you guys want. I'm going to throw it over to Lindsay, and she's going to teach you how to draw the adorable Monchi. Thank you, Lindsay, for joining us. Of course, thank you. I'm excited to be here with you guys and meet you guys and share a little bit of our work and process for the movie. Um, yeah, so I've got a little Manchi reference. You can see our goal, but I think you guys all also have these cute little Manchi pillows. So this is our, our model for today. Um, so if you've got your supplies, that's great. I will kind of talk for a minute. And if you have a chance, you can use whatever. Um, I'm going to do it digitally, but I'm going to draw it in a way that you don't have to undo or redraw because I love to draw with marker a lot of the time. And a lot of that kind of inspired the feel of some of the look of the movie. So I'll be doing it digitally, but I'm going to kind of start in a way that you don't have to erase. So if you'd rather use pencils so that you can be sure what it looks like and ink it later, that's fine. But if you want to dive in with a marker or a crayon, feel free to do that too. Okay. Um, yeah, so Manchi, he's like one of our favorite characters. He's kind of like this wonderful, lovable mascot for the family. And like everybody, kind of this unlikely hero and kind of imperfect and in flawed and flawed. Um, the shapes are all really hand drawn. So for the nose, we're going to start. We'll start with that. We'll kind of start with whatever is most forward. So I just kind of draw this simple shape. It's almost like it's a, how you would draw a heart simply, but kind of with three little shapes to it. And it doesn't have to be perfect. That's the fun thing about the whole look of the movie is we were really trying to make it feel handmade and human made. So if things aren't perfectly symmetrical or perfectly made, that's great. That's what we were trying to chase in the computer. So that's his little nose. And then we'll just draw like a little kind of half circle around it. Um, Watch all of his features are really scrunched together. Um, so it's kind of important for him to like draw things in the order that they're uh, forward in space. So we'll draw that. Then we'll draw his eyes. So I'll start with the left eye. I'm just gonna draw a circle and I'm gonna try to end it where the, where the nose line stopped. And then I'm gonna go on the other side and draw another circle. Um, so Manchi's got these kind of big wall-eyed eyes. It's kind of a part of the movie, right? That his, he can't look straight. He can't see perfectly. And then in his, in the end of the movie, there's a moment for him to kind of shine and, uh, and achieve this like clear vision that lets him have this kind of hero's moment. So whenever we draw Manchi, we draw his pupils really offset. So you can do it any direction you like, but like, I'll try, I'll make one looking down, you know, and I'll do it, um, I'll color it in to just make it black. Sometimes it helps if they're more on the outside to draw them a little bit more of an oval than a perfect circle. It helps it exaggerate the direction he's looking. So since I drew it on this bottom corner, on the other one, I'll do it at the opposite angle. So I'll put it here at the top. And again, when you're drawing these, you can put them how you like. If one's in, if I were to put one in the middle, the other one I might just maybe exaggerate more and maybe it's more low to the side. It's part of what helps make Manchi look kind of funny is this little wall-eyed character trait. Um, so from there, I'm gonna draw his mouth, these jowls. So I'll just start on one side. Um, I'm gonna kind of start the lower part of the eye and I'm just going to aim to make a curve that's going to end um, lining up with the nose. So I'm just going to do a shape like that. And again, these don't have to be totally perfect, clean shapes. It's again part of the look of the movie that we want these kind of imperfect, irregular forms. And then I'm going to do one on the other side, starting from there and then meeting back up and ending at the eye. And once you've done that, we can go in, we can give him his little eyebrows. So these are, they're not gonna be too thick. Sometimes when his brows get kind of thick, he can look a little angry. 
So we're just gonna give him little, yeah, little eyebrows, not, not too big, but they're gonna kind of be curvy and full and follow the shape of his eye. They're gonna, we're gonna leave a little bit of space in the middle of the, the nose and do a little curve. So from here, let's do, let's do, we can do the top of his forehead. So I'm gonna try to do this in run, one line. If you want, you could do like a little kind of semicircle curve. It's nice when all of his shapes are kind of curvy, but he also has this little tuft of hair that works. So I'm gonna kind of start drawing a curve but then I'm gonna bring it and do a little curve in the other direction. I'll do probably two for a little curve of hair. And then I'll finish that curved line. And the next we can do is ears, kind of like everything. It helps when they're kind of curved slightly different directions. They don't have to be exactly the same. So I'll do, I guess I'll do a simple little kind of like a C shape. We can start with that. And then I'm gonna do another little curve coming out from that. So he's got this little dent in his ear. And then I'm just gonna bring it around and kind of copy that first shape I'd started. So that's kind of getting his ear and the ear flap curving down. And then I'm just gonna draw a little, it can be a straight line or you can curve it, but I'm just gonna bring a line down and there's his little ear. For the ears too, you can do them. Sometimes I'll just draw them really quick and do little shapes. They can, you can do a lot of things with them. So don't worry too much if it's not perfect. We could also try doing one on this other side. I'm usually gonna have them coming up from behind his eyebrows. This one, let me try doing a little shape like this. And on this one, maybe I'll just add a little line to indicate the form. But they're kind of fun when they're kind of pointing in different directions and stuff like that. And let's get into finishing the mouse. We'll give him a tongue. Machi has a tongue. Sometimes we'll have his mouth open with a long hanging tongue. It's kind of fun if it goes off to the side. You can put it in the middle, to the side, long. But I'll do something. Let me see. I'll draw uh, kind of like a U shape. But as I come up, I'll just give it a little bend for fun. Sometimes it's kind of fun to give it some irregularity. It helps with his personality. You could also, if you wanted, you could do a really simple little tongue, like a little U shape. I think the important thing is to have fun with it. I think for us making this movie, we all love making art and have fun making art. And we wanted it to feel like that on screen that you feel like this is celebrating characters like Katie and people that love to have art and have fun with it and express themselves with it. Um, I usually too for the tongue, sometimes I'll draw like a little line in the middle of it to give it a little bit of form. And then from here, you can finish up the bottom of his mouth with a little semicircle. So since his tongue's here, I'll just do it from underneath. You don't need to see the whole thing. And then on his little, on his little jowls, he's got these little hand-drawn kind of dimples on there. So those I usually draw just by doing kind of simple U shapes that loop together. Three is probably enough. You can do more if you want. I'll give him another one. Maybe the bottom is a little smaller and I will give him more on this side, just a few little curves and a few little curves again. After you've done that, you can give him some, some whiskers. Sometimes I'll just do a few, uh, you know, I stick them on the side. I'll just put a few little curves and then on the other side, we can do a few more little curves. There's a little munchy head. So we can do the whole the whole body too, if you guys want to try that. One thing too that I'll take a break to talk for a second. One thing that's kind of nice about this style is we are just really trying to kind of make really lovable appealing characters, but also kind of celebrate imperfection. Like when I was hopping into this, I was like, oh my, I irritated my hand. I was like last night just scrubbing my like my bathroom floor, trying to get these stains out of the grout with a toothbrush working and I irritated my hand that I was like oh man my hand's gonna be sore to draw but I feel like that's so much of what the movie we were trying not to filter out like real people have real spaces and real homes and real life and all this stuff and so like we are a little imperfect and that's like why our characters kind of have these like wrinkly shirt collars and their hoodies have kind of the pilled fabric because all of those things are like the signs of our life and things we like and love and stuff so we were trying not to filter that out so even I was realizing like oh yeah like 
I'm really proud though that I got all those little stains out. My hands are a little sore and my lines might be a little less perfect, but that's kind of the whole thing we were trying to do with all of the shape language and stuff. And even though we make these movies in the computer, it's nice if you can feel a human hand. And that's kind of two way. Some of the look kind of feels kind of painterly and it all feels kind of hand drawn. It's because we just love celebrating the human uh, craft of making art. Um, but anyway, so I'll hop into doing a little bit of a body. Um, I might do him standing because it's kind of fun to see him as this little kind of loaf of bread character. So um, I'm gonna end up drawing a body over to the, to the right side. And he's kind of this, I'll draw over to the side to show you. He's a little bit of like a, a bean shape when we draw him. So, but I'm gonna start to, for, for him, we wanted him to feel really full and these forms against forms. So I'm gonna draw over here a simple little curve that's gonna be at the connection of his head to his body this kind of full loaf of bread character. And then I'm gonna kind of arch, I'll do, just do this quick so you can see this kind of curved C shape to kind of imply this part of this bean on his body. And then I'm gonna come around and do a big curve. And then I'm gonna give him another curve here. It's kind of overlapping. Maybe I should draw the legs first, but I think it'll be okay. Um, so I'll give him a little, a little leg it could be a simple straight leg, but maybe if you if you want, you can do like a little little tuft of hair and then a little straight leg. We could also just do little simple straight legs. For him in his 3D model, we got rid of a lot of anatomy and they're supposed to be these kind of like simple little legs, like simple drawings. So you can just do little straight lines. Um, and then we'll draw kind of three little circles for his feet and another three for his little toes. Let me give him another little one over here. A couple lines for his leg and these kind of little simple toes. And I'll give him another one. I'm kind of angling some of these lines too, just make it a little funny. And I probably should have drawn these first. Sometimes you make little mistakes, but if you have a pencil and you want to, if you want to erase this, you can, but it's okay if, if you don't. And then we'll give him a little tail. So we'll just give him a little, a little kind of half circle curve. And then we'll bring it around. And then we give him a little extra tuft of hair, some of these little simple tufts of hairs. And there's a little, and there's a little munchie. So from here, you can, you, we can color him in. Um, he's not too many colors. If you've got um, brown, yellow, and pink, that's probably enough. So I'm gonna, I, I'm just gonna kind of color him in with you guys. Doesn't quite matter where you start. I'm just going to start on his little uh, eye, eyebrow area. So his eyebrows and his little mouth area are all brown. I'm doing this digitally so I could fill it in, but I'm just going to kind of color it in like it were traditional media. In the movie, we did a lot of stuff like that too, where instead of using the conveniences of the computer tools that do things kind of perfectly, we tried to make them feel like they're handmade. So sometimes in like, the texturing of clothes or maybe fur. We're trying to imitate um, what traditional mark making does digitally. Like for example, when you're, I just edited my tools in the computer, but when you draw traditionally, when your marks, when they layer up, they get this kind of irregularity of pattern of the lines layering up. And we think that's really beautiful. So we tried to imitate that in the computer you know, and it's what a pen, what a marker, what a crayon does naturally. And so we just really like what that, that handmade stuff looks like. So a lot of the times in the computer, we're trying to imitate what you get naturally with a traditional material. Hi, Lindsay. This, this is Hi. such a fun session. Thank you so much. I was curious to know if you had um, a favorite Mitchell's character to draw. It's hard. I like a lot, like all of them for different reasons. I, I, I think Manchi is a lot of fun because he's kind of one of the funniest just being himself. You know, like when I was first designing him, that was kind of the challenge that I put on myself is that I wanted to like look at a drawing and it make me laugh. Um, so there's something that's always been really fun about him. Um, so maybe him and maybe Katie too. I think there's a lot about her. She's one of, she's kind of our main character. 
Um, so she was a really fun one to draw and design and get right. I think there's a lot of little specific details on her that really speak to her character. So those guys might be some of my favorites. Yeah. Um, how did you get started as an animator? Um, I always, uh, if I go back early enough, I always loved to draw. When I was around your age, probably I was drawing a ton. I would draw my own characters too. Uh, my parents were really supportive of the arts. And so I did a lot of drawing my own characters, trying to make my own little stories. Um, I took art classes outside of school um, where I kind of learned an appreciation of the arts and a little bit of like art history about painting and stuff. And then I ultimately went to college for computer animation. And so there I learned a little bit more about what a job in animation was like. Um, I should also say in high school, I went to one of the schools, CalArts, which is where the director studied. They had a summer program for high school kids. And so I went to that. And that was the first time I got to really learn about how to animate because I hadn't really understood actually how to animate. I think it's nice now there's a lot more like access to tools things online when I was a kid we the internet wasn't what it is today at all so there's always like things to find so I always looked for opportunities my parents helped me look for opportunities to learn more about art and animation and the behind the scenes I remember going when I was a kid to a mall and they had a Pocahontas animator there showing people how to draw Pocahontas and seeing an artist behind the movies was really inspiring for me to see the people like, you know, meeting people that do it. So it's great too that if you guys are in events like this, I think your parents are, you know, if you want to go to the art, it seems obviously very supportive. Um, but yeah, so then I went to college for computer animation. And from there I got a job in animation and that just kind of led to one job after the other to ultimately jobs doing character design and then, you know, jobs doing uh, production design, which was another one of my titles, which is just kind of being responsible for the, the look of the movie. But it's a fun like getting different projects to, it's fun to make your own art, but sometimes you're in these settings where you get an assignment or some project to do and you do things you wouldn't have thought of, or maybe you tr try with a medium that you wouldn't have thought of, and or maybe with other people and they might inspire you in different ways. How long did it take to animate the movie from start to finish? I know it must be a huge undertaking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's so the process from very start to finish, it was maybe five and a half years. Um, and that's not to necessarily animate it. You go through a couple of phases. So the first few years were a really small team. Like the first year, it was just me and the director, basically, where he was coming up with the idea. And it was an idea that was on like five pages. And then I did character designs for it. And then he'd work and he'd write and then eventually he had a co-writer. So the first year is basically him writing and working it out. And then I would help and do some art. Then we got some more artists on the team and storyboard artists, which are really valuable. And they'll take the script and they'll do simple, it looks like animation almost, but simple drawings and they'll draw out the whole movie. And so then that process happens for another couple of years maybe. Um, and then you go into production. So the production is when you start bringing on the 3D team and animators. And that takes about two years, two to three years normally. Um, I think on our project, it was about a little, yeah, maybe two and a half years. And that's when you're really animating it. And you're still sometimes working on the story and the story artists are still working and the art team is still working. But then you're a really big team with a lot of people. And that process is, yeah, like two and a half years.